Hi everyone, I hope you're well. Everything's opening up now, which is really exciting. Uh, things are getting going again, and so praise God for that. And we continue to pray that society will open up and we can return to some semblance of normal. As we do that, uh, I'm starting to wonder whether my psalm readings uh, still have a place in the world going forward. So if you're finding these encouraging, let me know as I try and work that out. I was thinking maybe as I get to 50 episodes, maybe the world has changed and it's time for us to return to normal habits and normal routines. Uh, that's okay. And uh, hopefully this has been helpful during the interim. On the other hand, if it continues to be really helpful for many people in Bexley and Bexley North Anglican churches, uh, we'll push on with them. But Psalm 103 is a Davidic Psalm. And I just said the other day, we had our first Davidic for a while. Now we have our second Davidic after a long while. Uh, and it's sort of like uh, peeling an onion, if you imagine layers of an onion uh, from the outside in, verses 1 and 2 and then 20 to 22 are all about praising the Lord. Now this would be a good time to stop and go and read the psalm if you haven't already read it. There's lots in it, so I can only really pick up on a few things as we go. But from the outside, it's all about praising God, praising His holy name, praising Yahweh, which is which is the name God has revealed for himself. And David, if indeed David wrote this, says, praise the Lord, my soul praise the Lord, and do not forget all of his benefits. And we'll come to those benefits in a moment, but then at the end of the Psalm, again, verse 20, praise the Lord, and all his angels of great strength who do his word, obedient to his command. Praise the Lord and his armies, praise the Lord, all his works. Praise the Lord, my soul. Uh, really, we wrap from the outside in with praising of God. He deserves all praise. And we know that. If you already know him, you already agree. And so I just want to encourage you and challenge you to keep praising God in your prayers and with your life. If you remember Romans 12, uh, 1 to 3, that's all about using your whole life to worship God and to praise his name. Uh, then we work our way in, and so verses 3 to 5 uh, and verses 15 to 19 really focus on humanity, mankind. Who are we? <laughs> what is our place before God? Well, 3 to 5 is a picture of what God gives us, the benefits he gives us. He forgives our sins, he heals our diseases, he redeems our life from the pit, he crowns us with faithful love and compassion, he satisfies with goodness and restores our youth like the eagle. Now you might think, wait a minute, many of those things haven't yet happened. And I, th I think that's the point. Now, verse four, he redeems your life from the pit. And that is literally from, from the dead, from, from death. Uh, he heals your diseases. Well, he doesn't in this life heal every possible disease that you might get. He does answer prayer but he doesn't promise to heal every disease in this age. Uh, this is very much a picture looking forward as David thinks through the, the, the hope of the Israelite people, that God's faithful love and compassion will bring about all of these things and raise people from dead, like Ezekiel's valley of dry bones. And then you go over to verse 15 to 19, uh, and day, the days of mankind are like grass. He blooms like a flower of the field, and when the wind passes over it, it vanishes. And this place is no longer known. So life, humanity, we are nothing in the scheme of things. But, verse 17, from eternity to eternity, the Lord's faithful love is towards those who fear him, and his righteousness towards the grandchildren of those who keep his covenant, who remember to observe his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. That's the summary at the end there, but the point of those verses is really mankind's place. We are but grass. God is eternal. So before him, what are we? We just pass away. And yet, in the faithfulness of God and in his love, it's towards those who fear him. Now, as New Testament believers, we know what that means. It's to fear his son and to trust in his son for salvation. Uh, it's to have all of our hope in him. And it speaks about the grandchildren of those who keep his covenant. That's very much around the Old Testament promises of generational blessing for the faithfulness of Israelite people as they passed on uh, the way to live in the land through the law and their children took it up 
there was generational blessing, if you like. Uh, we know now in the New Testament age that actually our grandchildren will need to trust in Jesus. We see that's one of the great blessings is that, that that can happen as people share the message of Jesus generationally and disciple their children who disciple those children who disciple those children and, and on it goes. Because God desires to save us and his righteousness is towards all who turn and fear him in the Lord Jesus. So that's mankind. So we've gone God. We've got mankind in, in sort of respect to God. And then finally, we get to the inner part uh, from, verse, uh, from verse 6 all the way through to verse 14. Uh, I was trying to figure out how to split that up because I think it's probably two parts, but we'll just keep it all together. And this is really all about the kinds of things God has done. Who is God? What has he done? It remembers first how he's revealed himself to Moses in verse 7. It remembers that the Lord is compassionate and gracious and slow to anger and rich in faithful love, which is worth remembering. God has shown these characteristics over and over again. He is slow to anger. If he wasn't, we'd be destroyed. We can't possibly even hope to live another moment except for God's faithful love and his slowness to anger. And verse 9, he'll not always accuse us or be angry forever. And that is that God has a day when all of our sins will be dealt with. Verse 10, he has not dealt with us as our sins deserve or repaid us according to our offences. If we are dealt with as we deserve, we are dead without hope. That's not how God deals with us. For verse 11, as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his faithful love to those who fear him. It's a, it's a lovely picture. And as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. So he loves us that much. And he's re removed our sin from us that much. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. Now that's the great hope, isn't it? The great hope of the gospel in Jesus is the great compassion he shows us. Without him, we are dead. With him, our sins are so far away from us, who can remember them? He doesn't. This is a wonderful truth in Psalm 103 and uh, something to indeed end up praising God for. Uh, I don't know if you've stopped lately to praise God for something, but praise him for his, for his love, his faithfulness, how slow he is to be angry with you and how far he removes your sin from you in Christ. Uh, and then you can continue praying as you enter your day. Amen.